for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Owen Brungart, and I go to Grandview University. Um, so, before I just share the story of how God changed my life, if you would bow your heads with me and pray, we will get moving forward. Um, Lord, I just thank you for this time tonight. Um, I pray for the opportunity for you to give me to share my testimony. Um, Lord, I personally know that two years ago, I would not foresee this happening, and I am very grateful for this moment. Um, I thank you for the opportunity to have people in the audience, Lord. Even if it was just one, this testimony would be worth it. Um, Lord, I pray I give you thanks for um, a great flight today. Um, because of you, my sister is here in attendance, and I'm very grateful that she was able to make it. And Lord, um, I know that all testimonies are different, but Lord, the overarching theme is the same, and that, that is that we are um, broken in need of a Savior, and Lord, you were that for me, so I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. So I have quite a bit written, so I will try not to speak too fast, but I do want to get through it. Um, my life, like all other born-again stories, started out with a relationship with God that kind of looked like a fish on the docks. I was flopping around, gasping for the truth, not knowing how close it really was to me. Being raised in a Catholic home, my religious journey began with a Catholic baptism as an infant at St. James. Um, I attended preschool there as well. After making it all the way to kindergarten, my parents homeschooled me from first grade to seventh grade. I attended PSR, which stands for Paris School of Religion, from around middle school until I was around 10 years old. From then on, I had no religious commitments besides Sunday Mass. Eighth grade was my first year ever back in public school, so I could continue playing sports. Um, my weekly church attendance was routine, and, I had no, and it had no impact on how I lived my life. The basis of church was to be a good person in my mind, but I thought I, re I received those teachings from my parents. I was a sinner with good morals, therefore seeking validation through my behaviors and ideas about myself and the world. I was not saved, and I was certainly not at peace. There was a time when I had to go beneath the church as a child with the adults attending the primary service. This short class was supposed to teach me about Christ. I can remember we had a book and were being asked religious questions, and I had no clue what was going on. Because of my lack of knowledge, especially as a young kid, I felt very awkward. I was going around, um, this was around four to six years old. Now that I'm older, I was experiencing feelings that resembled conviction and shame at that time. I felt like an outsider. I do not remember contributing to that discussion at all. Soon came the day when I would participate in Holy Communion and all of its prerequisites with my cousin. Afterwards, we attended um, Dairy Queen as a celebration with cookie cake. Um, and man, it really felt good to earn like that rite of passage. Um, it felt good to become worthy to take part in communion. Did I really just eat the body of Jesus? How much longer until there's not much of him left? That, <laughs> that was the level of my spiritual maturity. Um, I wasn't reborn. In fact, I never heard the word reborn until my sophomore year of college, and it kind of freaked me out. Um, I was still in the womb, being sculpted, crafted, sharpened, and sanded. If I were in Christ, I would be a new creature, but my old ways were not yet passed away. In my youth, pride had already rooted itself in the depths of my heart. Pride circulated through me like the blood in my veins. Um, and as silly as it sounds, every Sunday after Mass, we would, walk to, or we would go to the grocery store, and I would intentionally walk, watch the facial expressions of other people around us because we were wearing our nice church clothes. And I remember thinking to myself, man, like everybody must think we're rich. Um, at one point, we were talking about my coming of age to be an altar boy, and that kind of scared me. There was no way that I was about to dress in white and kneel in front of a crowd for an hour. I was comfortable in my pew towards the back of the church, and besides, the pew presented the trouble, its own troubles. Um, I was confused on why there was so much kneeling and standing, by, but the only thing I did know was that my knees and lower back would be tested every weekend. Uh, I concluded that if Jesus suffered death on a cross, then I could suffer that horrible crime. Um, during Catholic services, the priest would always read a quick passage of scripture and then relate it to personal experiences. I really didn't understand any part of what he was trying to communicate because Mass was 1% scripture, 99% routine. When I grew more into the age of around 14 to 18, I began understanding the references the priest was making, but I was only processing the information at face value. Still lacking any genuine connection with God, Pastor Steve, our pastor at Grandview University for the men's wrestling team, um, said that there's 14 inches between heaven and hell. This is the distance between knowing who God is and actually carrying out the cross that you deserve. When I entered high school, I was a quiet kid. I did not open up to really anyone, including my parents. I had tendencies to bottle my emotions up. 
Um, I participated in football, baseball, and wrestling, strived to, to um, keep a 4.0 GPA, um, which I still do, and found my identity and reputation in the things of um, like school, everything that was material. Never have I ever experienced more anxiety than when I fell into doing things for the wrong reasons. Um, by this I mean people pleasing. Um, because of the many masks that I wore, I ended up spreading myself too thin and I was becoming anxious, frustrated, and neglecting my own needs. I never viewed myself as ever being better than anybody else, but it was not appealing to me how immature high schoolers were. Um, I never understood why nobody took their identity and performance in, or as an athlete as serious as I did. It seems I was the only one wanting to set high standards and had desires to reach those standards. That was my pride talking. Uh, this arrogance led to a distant relationship with the team because I was always um, subconsciously judging them. Hypocrisy and jealousy soon became a part of my friend group. Um, when I wanted to have fun, I was so worried that if I were to act goofy, funny, relaxed, or anything to portray that I wasn't serious, then I would be like them, and they would figure out that I wasn't who I thought I was. This mindset actually caused me to talk to more adults than those my own age. Um, you see, when pride comes, disgrace follows. In my senior year of high school, I entered my first relationship. Even prior to having a relationship with Christ, I held the same principles that scripture teaches regarding relationships, and I idolized them. Uh, one of the idols was purity. Apart from this internal standard, I felt good knowing I was better than the others in my high school because they were frequently indulging in one another. However, my relationship started off like no other relationship should. Uh, because it was my first, I was excited to have a partner in life, someone I could speak to, relate to, make memories with, seek advice from. But it lacked any um, form of support or love or understanding from my family. Um, the only thing that my family provided the relationship was emotional suffering, anxiety, feelings of worthlessness, um, being called worthless at one point, and then the choice to decide between her and them. It forced me, forced me to spend much of my time at her house instead of mine. I never really received the chance to truly love or be guided constructively. Uh, my reputation with my parents, especially my mom, was crumbled at that point. Um, despite having a girlfriend, uh, being a 4.0 student, winning the wrestling state championship my senior year, um, I remained broken. I was in pursuit of what love was supposed to feel like. Weren't people you could trust supposed to bring you joy and help you out? Uh, my relationship would last for more than four years, ripping me limb from limb of who I thought I was and where I thought I was going. Not only did this situation and its encompassing emotions allow sin to narrate most of this time, but it produced sins that were not only against myself, but against God. As I mentioned earlier, I never really understood scripture, so being a Christian in my mind had a legalistic foundation. This led to a lot of pain. Having moral standards meant that my judgment for a situation was based on my feelings. And if you know anything about feelings and how quick people are to judge or change their mood, uh, my foundation was constantly shaking, constantly cracking and breaking away from the earthquakes of a broken heart. I had nothing to fall back on and no direction that seemed to produce any relief. My mom had given me a Bible, but I never read it. Um, she even gave me a pocket Bible that I may have opened, but again, never read. I, um, I had no reason to. What would I gain from it? When I arrived at Grandview, something felt different, though. It is, as, it is as if deep in my bones, my entire being was still searching. I was still searching for love, a kind of love that accepted my flaws, sanded down the edges, and molded me into something new. I began having feelings that I needed to take my faith more seriously now that I was independent. In the fall of 2020, Grandview had multiple outdoor worship services in the green space. Pastor Russ led the sermon, and the band led the worship. I knew this was where I was called to start. I would hear worship music and felt convicted when I would not attend. During one of these worships, Allie Newman would approach me from my left, out of the corner of my eye, introduce herself, and connect me to Chris Guest after the worship. Ironically, Chris was also on the GV wrestling team, who introduced me to Blake Joyner and many others that same night. In the following days, I asked Allie if she knew of a good church. She recommended a few, but said most people attended Walnut Creek downtown. One day, I rode to church with Chris for a Sunday service. Afterwards, we were parked at a stoplight on our way back to campus, um, and Chris told me about his life before Christ. He, um, he mentioned three things specifically that made my blood feel like concrete. I was frozen in awe of his admittance to what, in my mind, were like dark personal secrets, but I can remember him confessing with like, such peace. Um, he said it effortlessly. So following the termination of the spring semester, Blake invited me to live in his house on McCormick Street. Um, not only was this a blessing for me, but it was a blessing for Blake as well, um, because he collected my rent each month. <laughs> um, the community and culture of the guys at the house was amazing. 
it felt like I was beginning to find what I was searching for. Um, spoiler alert, my searching would not actually end up finding out anything because of what was um, freely available and would be soon given to me. However, the eyes of my heart were still scaled over from truth. Um, on one occasion in particular, Trinity Schroeder and I, a housemate of mine at the time, just got back from lifting together. It was around 9 a.m., and he took the downstairs shower while I took the upstairs. I remember feeling amazing uh, because the pump was real. Um, <laughs> but I could, feel, I could feel unrighteous thoughts creeping into my mind. Suddenly, I heard music, and because of how the vents in the house are connected, I heard music that Trinity was playing from downstairs, and it was gospel music. And it put into perspective just how seriously I was not taking my faith. I was deeply convicted. Over the next few weeks, I left no stone unturned. I could feel I was still searching, but not with all my heart. Rather, with his grace, Jesus found me. He knew me from the beginning. He saw me, and he waited until the appointed time to reveal himself to me. Jesus gave me a new heart and put in a new spirit. Um, but it wasn't until I had to experience multiple breakdowns and realized that my highest efforts to find peace were far beneath the lowest standard of Christ. The, uh, the ideologies I had about myself and the world weren't even worth the dirt that I was created from. It was during this time, summer of 2021, that I died to my previous self, resurrected with Christ, and was separated from all of my blemishes. My salvation was a progression of events, and even though I do not know of a defining moment, I do know that the hand of Jesus Christ grabbed a hold of mine. He gripped my hand, seemingly the only thing still above the waves, and rescued me from my own drowning. The gift of salvation does not mean my life has been made easier. However, if I were to say I had no sin, I would be deceiving myself and the truth of Jesus. The key to heaven's gate would be unknown to me. Although Christ continually shows me uh, my faults daily, he also reminds me of his death on the cross and the love that kept him there. For the first time in my life, these scales from my heart had fallen. The burden of my eternal punishment um, was overcome by the only person with a record of infinity and zero. Um, for those of you who are still searching for something, remember that worldly satisfaction is temporary and insufficient. This past wrestling season, I had the privilege of becoming, um, excuse me, the NAI national champion at 197 pounds, um, but that was um, a brief time that was short-lived, um, and that too became insufficient. It was an outstanding accomplishment, but it did not provide me with any reassurance of my worth. My accomplishments in this life are only byproducts of the life that God so graciously gave me. Uh, the man you see here tonight is a new creation, not one that is still a slave in the kingdom of darkness. And if there is someone still out there who feels they have been searching and are continually coming up short, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. God will find you when you are ready. And with that being said, I love to continue talking about my story, so if this message sparked any feelings of any kind from within you, feel free to snag me anytime. Thank you. <laughs>